The term serial killer was coined in 1947, but it only rose to common usage after the 1970s. Because of this, we tend to think of serial killers as a fairly modern phenomenon. It's a big misconception. As far back as recorded history goes, you seem to find serial murderers, and some of the worst killers from history have been largely forgotten. If they were alive today, they'd be up there with Ted Bundy. It's only because they are cloaked in history that today we neglect them. So in this video, we look at some of those forgotten killers. In northern Jamaica can be found a ruined castle, slowly crumbling into the soil. Countless people visit this mysterious ruin each year, but not all understand its dark past. It was built in the late 1700s by the Scottish landowner Lewis Hutchington. He named it Edinburgh Castle, after the much older castle in Scotland. Little is known of his background, or of how he afforded to build a castle, but before long, local residents began to accuse him of all kinds of criminal activity. To start with, it was only said he had been stealing cattle, which in those days was enough to start a war, but following accusations would be much less mild. Almost immediately after the castle was completed, people in the area started disappearing. At the time, many travellers, merchants and even pirates would visit the castle, as nowhere else in the area let strangers stay the night. But sleeping at the castle was not a good decision. Hutchinson had a bloodlust, being unable to resist murdering guests. Few facts about the killings are available. Rumour has it he would order his slaves to throw the corpses into a nearby sinkhole. Today that sinkhole is known as Hutchinson's Hole, and Hutchinson is known as the Mad Doctor of Edinburgh Castle. You can only keep this kind of thing secret for so long, and eventually a soldier was sent to bring him in for questioning. Being pretty much insane by this point, he simply murdered the soldier, which to be fair, they should have seen coming. But either way, this final murder dooms Lewis Hutchinson. In 1773, he was put on trial and executed by hanging. No one knows how many lives he took, but from clothing found at the castle, some estimate a body count above 50. Many believe Edward H. Roloff was the most intelligent serial killer in history. A man of many talents, he was a doctor, lawyer, teacher, inventor, artist and philologist. Also being a part-time criminal, it was like he was trying out every side quest. At a young age, he was forced to work rather than study, due to his family being poor. It was on the job that he learned his various skills. In the 1840s, he was pursuing a career as a lawyer, and all was going well. But then his wife and daughter disappeared. Believing the wife was having an affair, he fatally bludgeoned her with a pestle. Now assuming the daughter was another man's, he poisoned her. Like Ted Bundy, he defended himself in court, which is never a good idea. There was not enough evidence to prove murder, but Roloff was found guilty of kidnapping. He would spend 10 long years in prison, but being a genius, he used that time to learn philology, the study of how languages develop. He even tried to publish his own theories while locked up. Then on finally being released, he was re-arrested that same day, and again charged with murder, but somehow he was able to escape. Alone he fled into the wilderness of Pennsylvania, where he would lose two toes and almost starve to death, but tragically he would fully recover. From then on he was a career criminal, robbing and conning people to get by. Years later, a robbery at a dry goods store would go sideways, with Roloff shooting a resisting victim in the head. This time he was given the death penalty. According to some reports his last words were, Hurry up, I want to be in hell in time for dinner. He also requested his execution be delayed, at least until his theories could be published. With no one left to claim his body, Edward H. Roloff's brain was removed. At the time, it was the largest brain on record, and still now is kept at Cornell University. Now known as the Genius Killer, it is thought he murdered five people. At this point, one of the most well-known historic serial killers is Elizabeth Bathory, the Countess who used her position to murder peasants but you might not know there are multiple other killers with an eerily similar story. One of them is Daria Soltykova, a powerful noble in 1700s Russia. Her wealthy husband died young, 
leaving her the richest widow in Moscow. More than 600 peasants were under her control, so it's unfortunate she was sadistic with a love of torture. Blinded by jealousy, she hated any woman considered more attractive than her, and especially younger women. Torture was a hobby of Soltykova, usually in the form of beatings or burning. Victims' complaints were ignored for obvious reasons, but as her crime spree went on, even 1700 society was horrified by it. She was accused of killing 138 people, most of which female serfs under her control. But also for obvious reasons, very few witnesses were willing to give evidence. She was found guilty of killing 38 people, but everyone knew the true number was much higher. Her punishment was severe. For an hour she was chained up in public, with a sign around her neck detailing the crimes. Then she was sent away to a monastery, dying years later chained up in the cellar. And she is just one example. There was also the English heiress Elizabeth Branch, who killed all of her servants, and Madame LaLaurie, the New Orleans landowner who killed slaves in her home. Another prolific female serial killer was Catherine Montvazon. A mysterious figure of 17th century France, she led a network of fortune tellers. But the network did a lot more than just tell fortunes, providing drugs and poison to clients. It was even said they would perform black magic ceremonies. They created love potions and magical amulets, mostly for the upper class in Paris. Often a client bought poison with a love potion, hoping to seduce and murder a wealthy potential spouse. In time, poison came to be the biggest part of Montvazon's business. Entire teams of poison makers were under her employment. They were killing some of the richest people in France. One of her clients was a mistress to the king, who actually tried to poison him. In 1677, a fortune teller was arrested for murder. Scared she would be executed as a witch, she revealed the secret network of poisoners. After a huge investigation, Movazon was suspected of being involved in more than a thousand murders. The ensuing scandal is known as the Affair of the Poisons. The scandal did not end with her being executed for witchcraft, and soon the estimated death toll rose to 2,500. Killing that many people might sound like a terrible crime, but to be fair, they were French, and that's the moral of the story.